All right, so these notes are going to be on n to the n thepl, which we use specifically when we are finding the limit as x goes to infinity of some function f of x divided by another function g of x. So whenever we have this situation where we have a ratio, you know, like a rational expression, and we've got one function over another, we're going to use n to the n thepl to determine if the top wins or if the bottom wins. And what I mean by win is I mean which is growing fastest, the top or the bottom. So when we were talking through asymptotes and from what we've done with limits so far, we have learned that if you have some sort of number over infinity, that is like a numeric approximation for zero, or, you know, a smaller infinity over a bigger infinity, that's going to equal zero. And we've also learned that if you have some number divided by zero, or something big divided by zero, or something big divided by something smaller, then that equals infinity. And so what we're doing with n to the n thepl is we're trying to see if the bottom wins and our result should be zero, or if the top wins and our result should be infinity. All right, and we're still going to keep in mind if we're plugging in a negative infinity or a positive infinity. Actually, these are only for positive infinity. So you don't have to worry about the signs as much um, as you would have on the other day. But you should pay attention to the answers that should be the infinity to see if there's a coefficient that makes it negative. Um, <clears throat> but all of these are dealing with how fast a graph grows as the x increases. So we are specifically looking at the right side of the graph, not the left, just the right. Okay, so n to the n thepl is an acronym that teaches you which graphs grow the fastest so that every time you do a problem, you don't have to like picture the graphs in your head. You just think about where they show up in the acronym and then you know. So the function that grows the very fastest is n to the n. And an example of this function would be like y equals x to the x power. So you've got 1 to the first, 2 to the second, 3 to the third, 4 to the fourth, 5 to the fifth that is going to grow faster than anything else you can possibly think of. And that's because you've got like bases and exponents changing. It just gets really large. The second is factorials. I'm putting an exclamation because that's what a factorial is. So y equals x factorial. So if you guys recall factorials, um, like if you had five factorial, it just means five times four times three times two times one. So when you have a factorial, you are multiplying that number by all of the numbers underneath it. So that grows fast, but it doesn't grow as fast as x to the x. The next one is exponential functions. This would be like y equals e to the x, y equals, <laughs> y equals 2 to the x, etc. So those grow pretty fast, but not near as fast as these other two. Next is polynomial. So like y equals x squared, y equals x cubed minus 5x plus 2, anything that you can think of like that. Those are all polynomial. Those can grow pretty fast, but they're not going to grow as fast as exponential. Next is linear. You guys know what linear equations are, like y equals x. I mean, they go up to the right, you know, so it's, but it's not very quick. And then last is actually logarithmic, which you guys might not have known grow that slowly. So we have y equals ln x, and then y equals log x. And these, if you think about a log graph, they kind of go up like this, which means they grow fast at first. They kind of go up, but they level off and then they grow really, really slow after that. They almost look like they have horizontal asymptotes, but they don't. So logarithmic, logarithmic is like the very slowest growing graph. So we are not concerned with what these graphs do when they are close to zero. We're concerned with what these graphs do when they're on the right side of the graph as they are going forever. So these are how quickly they grow in decreasing order. So... A 2 is going to beat a 5. A 4 is going to beat a 5. 
everything is faster than logarithmic. So that's what we're thinking about is does the top win, does the bottom win, and it's going to be based on what functions you can see within the top and within the bottom. So we'll go ahead and do a couple example problems and then we'll talk about it more in class. So the limit as x approaches infinity and it's always going to be infinity. If it's not x approaching infinity, you cannot use n to the n fepl. I have seen students try to use it for limits as x goes to zero or limits as x goes to negative infinity or a limit as x goes to a number and you cannot use it. So it's important that you know this is only for this one specific instance. So the limit as x goes to infinity of 3x squared plus 3 to the x minus 2 over x plus 1 factorial. So we know from working with asymptotes that when you are thinking about a limit at infinity, you can ignore all the terms that are going to be smaller. So a negative 2, if you plug an in infinity somewhere, is not going to do anything. If you plug an in infinity into an exponential term versus a polynomial term, the exponential term is going to overpower this one. So we don't have to think about this term at all. So in the numerator, we have an exponential function. In the denominator, we have a factorial. And so if we think about which one wins, we can see a factorial is a level 2, an exponential is a level 3. So that means that the bottom is bigger. The bottom is going to win. And so that limit is 0 as x goes to infinity. All right, for the next example, we're going to say... the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x plus 5 over ln x plus 2. So when I look at this one, I again, I'm looking at just what's biggest. So I'm going to ignore the 5 and I'm going to ignore the 2 because when you plug infinity in somewhere, those numbers don't make a difference. On the top, we have a linear function. On the bottom, we have a logarithmic fun function. Nothing grows slower than a logarithmic, so that means that the top wins. So now I have to think about what happens when I plug a big number into these just to make sure my signs are going to be good. So 3 times infinity is going to be positive. ln of infinity is also going to be positive because ln graphs, they start beneath the x-axis, but then they cross and then they're above the x-axis forever. So I'm going to say the top wins, so it's infinity. It's a positive infinity because I don't have any negative coefficients that would have made it otherwise. And since it's positive infinity, I'm going to also say does not exist unbound. Now, if you are comparing two functions that are, let's say, two functions that are the same, and you kind of get this idea um, just based off the work that we did with horizontal asymptotes, but I'm going to specify it again anyway. If you have two functions that are the same, like let's say 3 to the x and 4 to the x, then you just say which one would grow faster, and you can kind of use your brain for that. So these are both exponential. That means they're both like a level three. And so the bottom would grow faster because the base is bigger. And so this one is going to be the bottom one. So this one is zero. Um, kind of like when we had polynomial functions that we were dealing with with the asymptotes. If you had x to the fifth on top and x to the third on bottom, the top would win. That sort of thing. Um, it's also possible for these to be like the same size. So you could have like 4 to the x over 4 to the x and the limit would be 1. So mostly we're concerned about when these different functions are being compared with each other. It shows up this unit, but this actually shows up a lot in calculus BC. So there's going to be a long period of time where we don't really feel like this shows up anywhere and then all of a sudden it will show up a lot. So just keep this in mind, keep these notes in a safe place, and then we'll make sure that we refer back to it whenever we see a situation where it would apply.